so this is this is the old unit going away. And this is the high power wall connector. Uh, this is actually the second generation high power wall connector. Um, so I've provided a couple of details on what's a little different than this one, or different with this one. Still goes up to an operating amperage of uh, 80 amps, uh, 240 volts. Okay, when you uh, pull everything out of the box, this is basically what you get. Um, so this appears to be the, uh, the mounting bracket. Um, this looks like the, uh, the back of the unit. Um, some screws, looks like some plugs for the different holes depending on how you wear it. Uh, the manual, uh, the actual charging uh, front case, which appears to be a little deeper than the first generation um, high power wall connector. Um, but I know that they actually designed it so you can uh, put the cable over the top. Um, very heavy gauge wire, definitely compared to my little Voltec cable. So that's kind of nice. Feels rugged. Um, pretty pliable though. Alright, I pulled the uh, packaging off of this just so you could get a better look at what it looks like once you pull the uh, bubble wrap off. Um, here you can actually see the, uh, the port inside where you can uh, uh, put the connector in which is obviously a, a new feature of this. And you can actually now kind of see where the cable can be uh, kind of draped over the top. And I know this front cover comes off and there's some work we have to do inside of that. So it looks very similar uh, from the front to the other one. Um, definitely deeper. Um, this might be a little bit different than the other one as well. It looks like it's shaped a little bit differently. You know, there's a couple different options of how to install this. So there's a bottom and rear entry uh, where the, cable, the power comes in, either the bottom or from a wall in the back. And that uses this bracket, which connects directly to the back of the unit, the charging unit. But if you want the power to come in through the top, from the top of the unit, then you actually use this bracket. Um, so that's a little, a little different. I don't think the other one was like that at all. Um, so it doesn't look like I'll, I'll need this piece if, for, uh, for my installation. Because that will be coming in through, um, through the back. The next step was to use the bracket identify the location where you're going to put the screws um, and it says you have to have them four and a half inches apart which is what the top and bottom holes are um, so you can see I'm actually right down the cables going to go through this side uh, through that hole and then basically align to this unfortunately um, the cables on the right side of this uh, stud uh, instead of the left side, which is kind of where the, the hole in the bracket is designed for. But I can't move it over because I have this ventilation pipe here um, and it won't give enough space for the cable. So I'll do with it, do it this way. So I decided that since I have to put the screws on the left side of this bracket, I am going to use a wall anchor uh, for the right side. You can see I drilled the hole here, so I'm going to use one of these wall anchors to just kind of sure up the top right side. Um, the kit comes with two screws and you can tell they're, they're definitely for going into the studs. Uh, I would imagine you could use wall anchors in general uh, if you wanted to uh, to support it but I figure two screws on the left side in the stud and then one in the top right to kind of support the top uh, should keep it from moving around. You see there I used the, uh, the two from the kit on the left side in the stud and the cable through that little um, cut out in the bottom and then I put a, another wall anchor in the top right just to, to make sure the top is extra secure since I had to use the left side holes um, and it's definitely on there. So the next step is to take the front cover off. You have to remove this 
Torx bit on the end and then it says to use a screwdriver to gently pull it apart so we will see how that goes. Okay, now that I have the front cover off, the next step is to um, take the other front cover, the cover that's under the metal looking piece. And this one requires these um, securing torque bits to, uh, to open it up. Luckily, the kit comes with, uh, comes with one of those security torque bits. So that's good, because um, I don't have any of those. So take the cover off and show you what's inside. Okay, uh, I took the torque bit, um, the screws off the top cover. And uh, here you have it. Here's the little uh, circuit board that uh, has the LEDs for showing the status. Here's the ribbon cable uh, that will connect to the front once I have it installed. You see, down here is where the power is going to come in. And I imagine that's where I'm going to plug it in. Um, but we'll see once we get there and the instructions and ground down there. One other thing to note, uh, while we're looking at this right now, is you can actually switch this to a slave mode. You can have four of these linked together, uh, so one master and three slaves. So you set the master to whatever the maximum amperage is, um, and then set the other ones to slave and connect it into uh, uh, off of this one, um, and just kind of continue down the line and uh, then it will balance the power between them so you can charge multiple Teslas at one time off of one circuit, which is kind of nice. So the next step is I'm going to have to mount this to the bracket that I put on the wall, and then I'll put these clips on to cover the, uh, the screws that are going to go in to hold it on the wall. All right, so we'll do that now. There's one other item that I'm going to take care of right now where it's easier uh, to get to instead of up on the wall is since I'm putting power in the back, I need to plug this hole uh, on the bottom since that's where the, a different mounting process. Um, and you just do that with the included little cap here. So I'm just going to put that in now uh, a little easier than once it's installed up on the wall. It is now on the wall. Put the four screws in. Um, I, haven't little put, I haven't put the little screw covers on yet because you never know. You can kind of see the screws there. There's one down the bottom each side. I haven't put those covers on yet because I want to make sure that I don't have to adjust this in any way before uh, moving forward. So you can see my lines coming out there. I actually didn't end up going through that bottom hole when I looked at it a little bit closer. Um, that bracket had a hole for this smaller hole, and uh, it doesn't appear that it really matters which direction you come in with the power. Um, I think the bottom one's mainly for specific types of conduit. It looks like this one's um, the hole for the wall mount. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, you should be able to see the um, ground cable uh, that's connected to the ground in the back, uh, rear circuit board there. This uh, lighter green block in the center is where I'm going to be connecting uh, the L1, L2, the two legs for the 240. Um, but first I'm actually going to uh, solder the ends of these, uh, to keep the cable from fraying up and uh, make sure I get a better uh, connection. So, not sure if you can really see it here, but I've put solder on the ends of the cables. <coughs> Excuse me. And also added, uh, uh, cleaned it up with some denatured alcohol. The next thing is to uh, set up the operating current. So in my case, I'm using 240. Um, so the first dip switch is going to be uh, down uh, for 240, line to line. Um, and for position two, this is actually the communication um, between the, the wall connector and the vehicle. So by factor they have it set in the normal position, so I'm going to leave it there, which is what it says to do. And then the next thing is to set the rotary switch 
to the amperage that you're going to be using. Um, so I'm going to be using a 40 amp breaker, um, which is 32 amps of maximum power, and that is rotary position number six. So go over here, and hopefully you'll be able to see these connections. So you can see there on the dip switch on the left, position one is down for 240. Uh, position two is up, which is normal communications, uh, what it recommends. And then the rotary switch is set to six for 32 amps of maximum power. And you can see there I've got all the wiring attached now. The next step is to replace the front cover um, to seal it up. And you'll notice here again, really nice seals uh, on this unit uh, compared to other units that I've seen. Of course, um, much, much better than my Voltec one, which was basically just some tape on foam. Um, okay, so I'm going to connect this ribbon cable, which has been taped on here. And I'm going to connect that to the cover and then seal it back up. And then you'd be ready for your first power test. Uh, in my case, I have to actually change breakers, so I'll show you that next. Now with mine, see here, I've got a 20 amp breaker. And that was because I had the, uh, the Voltec charger for my Chevy Volt, um, which is a 15 amp charger. So it required a 20 amp um, breaker, uh, kind of that double breaker configuration there. But uh, when they installed it, I asked them to put in the uh, eight gauge wire so that I could run 40 amp, because uh, I knew at some point I'd probably want to upgrade and didn't want to rerun wire. So now I have to replace this breaker uh, with a 40 amp breaker. And uh, of course, when you're doing this, you want to turn the main off, which I'm about to do. And I'm not going to record, because if I kill myself, I don't want to show that on YouTube. And, um, also, I want to have both hands free so I can take care of all this. So hopefully in a couple of minutes, I'll show you a new breaker installed. So I figured to show a little bit more. Now have the main breaker off. And just pop this out. You just kind of rock it um, this direction. And uh, it pops right out. You can see it's got clips that it sits into. And I'm going to replace that with my 40 amp breaker here in just a second. Okay, so I've got my wiring back in there. 40 amp breaker, which is turned off. Of course, the main power's off. And I'm going to try to actually show me plugging this thing back in. It kind of slides in the back here. Get the video back on there. I'm not sure if you can really see it in there. The legs flip in there, and then this should all rotate forward. And there it is. Cables back inside the box there. And we should be good to go. Leave the breaker off until get everything back on. Okay, I'm going to flip the main breaker. Okay. My lights came back on. I hear my air conditioner's back on. No fire. All right, I'm gonna flip the putting amp breaker on. Let's come over and see what we've got here. Well, looks like it went through its sequence. It was set in the manual. It looks like it's ready to go. So the next step will be to put the top cover on. There it is, um, with the cable very poorly hung on it, but I imagine that's what it's going to look like 90% of the time. Uh, you can see where the uh, connector actually goes in. You notice that the the, uh, the connector is even a little different. Uh, this top piece seems to be plastic, and uh, this cover is also plastic where the other ones it was uh, I think aluminum. This also looks a little bit different than the previous ones. Um, 
this feels like it's uh, plastic, but it might just be plastic coated. And you can see the button's a little different. So let's, uh, let's plug this in and see what happens. Hold the car in. Sign. You can see that the uh, power is starting to run on that, or at least it's signaling it's charging. Yeah, this year. All right, two hundred forty. Two ish volts, 32 amps, which is what I set it to. Getting uh, mileage per hour, still climbing a little bit here. Up around 20 miles an hour. Hopefully, that helped some of you. Um, if you're going from a Chevy Volt to a Tesla, which I absolutely recommend, Tesla is the best car in the world, period. Um, but going from a Voltec charger to a Tesla wall charger, also another recommendation. Um, just remember that if you put in a Voltec charger, um, you know, that cabling is probably rated at 20 amps um, and not 40. So you'll have to adjust your uh, Tesla uh, high power wall connector uh, or run new cabling. Uh, if, you, if you ran uh, a larger cable, lower gauge then um, then you can go up to to whatever your cable is rated at uh, obviously be careful um, you don't want to kill yourself all right good luck